Hey everyone, I'm Instructor Brooks. I want to thank you for supporting my channel. Make sure you hit subscribe to join our community. Today we're going to discuss the mid-swing phase of the gait cycle and we're going to finish with, yes, that test question. So if you're ready to learn something, let's go. For every phase of the gait cycle, you should consider three joints ankle, knee, and hip. That doesn't mean that there's a muscle contraction occurring at every joint, but it's a great way to make sure you don't forget one. One of the biggest things that most students forget is they think about the ankle and the foot when they're thinking about the gait cycle, and as they go through it, they do everything right for the ankle, but they forget either the knee or the hip. So if you always say, I'm gonna look at the ankle, the knee, and the hip, you're always gonna be hitting all the joints that you need to hit at the bare minimum. The seventh phase of the gait cycle is mid-swing. Let's take a closer look and apply our strategy of ankle, knee, and hip. First, looking at the ankle, the anterior tibialis must contract isometrically to maintain the neutral dorsiflexion it achieved in the previous phase. This is crucial for proper gait mechanics. Many, many, many gait deviations occur due to an inability to properly dorsiflex the ankle. Moving on up to the knee, we should see the knee flexed about 50 degrees, but not due to the hamstrings. The knee is flexed due to the energy generated during toe off and with the hip flexion that is occurring. The momentum of that phase is pushing the knee into flexion, so there are no knee muscles working here. Again, the hamstrings are not flexing the knee here. Finally, at the hip, we see a concentric contraction of the hip flexors to continue to pull the hip into flexion to propel the leg past the stance leg so that we can take a step forward. Get on to that test question. During mid-swing, which nerve, if damaged, will cause foot drop leading to a trip or a gait deviation? A, deep peroneal, B, superficial peroneal, C, sciatic nerve, D, tibial nerve. The answer is A. The anterior tibialis is innervated by the deep peroneal nerve. Damage to this nerve is gonna give you a lot of different deviations because it's going to reduce the body's ability to dorsiflex the ankle. I hope you learned something from this video. Don't hesitate to post questions in the comment section below. Follow me on Instagram at Instructor Brooks. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and become part of our community. If you got all that covered, have an awesome day. And remember, knowledge is power.